Let us pray. Our Father, God, we thank you for this day that you've given us. We thank you for your loving us. We pray that you would fill this place with your Holy Spirit this day. May the words that are spoken be those from you. And may they touch our hearts in some way. Guide us in all that we do, Christ. And help us to love and honor you. We pray in his name. Amen. Amen. It looks like the rest of the month you'll have to put up with me. Henry David Thoreau once wrote, Though you do not, <clears throat> though I do not believe that a plant will spring up where no seed has been, I have faith in a seed. Convince me that you have a seed there, and I am prepared to expect wonders. With all of Jesus' references to agriculture, it's interesting to note that only now are we, are we beginning to understand some of the developmental characteristics and other mechanisms of plant growth. As scientists continue to investigate plants under varying conditions. Now we're going to shift gears. On the 15th of May, 1997, the countdown continued on schedule. The crew ate breakfast at 11.15 in the crew quarters of the operations and checkout building and then suited up around midnight. They departed for Pan 39A at 12.30 a.m. By 1.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, the final crew member, Carlos I. Custom Noriega, entered the orbiter. At 4.05 a.m., the gaseous oxygen vent hood was retracted, and at T-minus two-minute mark, and counting, the flight crew was directed to close and lock their visors. Being a team member on the experiment that the shuttle Columbia would deliver to the Mir space station, I was excited. We all watched from a maximum safe dis distance as the shuttle, lighted from all angles, stood glistening on pad 39A. We could hear launch control over the nearby loudspeakers as the countdown proceeded. Auto sequence started at 4.07 a.m and launch would occur at the start of the launch window. The solid, rock, solid rocket boosters ignited, and we watched in awe as this enormously awkward looking machine slowly lifted from the ground, pushed by a combined rocket power of 6,600,000 pounds of thrust. The earth beneath our feet began shaking, and the sound of the engines was deafening as the shuttle slowly lifted the combined flame emitted from the rocket's cone was enormous as they brightly lighted the early morning sky. The solid rocket boosters separated, uh, separation occurred at 4.10 a.m. Main engine cutoff occurred at T plus 9 minutes at 4.16 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And the space shuttle Atlantis was out of sight downrange. Friday, May 16, 1997, at 9.33 p.m., Atlantis and the Mir Space Station docked. This was only the sixth docking with the Mir Space Station. Astronauts and cosmonauts greeted one another and then began the business of transferring about 7,000 pounds of food, water, and experiments and other odds and ends supplied to the space station. Back on Earth on the 9th of August in 1997, Scientists reported that for the first time, seeds planted in space had produced seeds that were subsequently harvested, dried, replanted, and produced generation after generation. The plants used for this experiment were brassica grotta, which is a relative of broccoli, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts. Their life cycle was very fast, one which made them perfect, a perfect choice for the experiments. Perhaps my Brassica Rapid narrative is a, a bit too out there, but before investigation, that type of an investigation, it was all a mystery, just like Jesus' parables. Jesus often used agricultural examples in his parables because people that he ministered to understood these examples. They could grasp the imagery and apply it, being able to take hold of the information and apply it is very important to our understanding of anything, especially scripture. <laughs> Hermeneutics is used in religion and social philosophy studies. In its simplest form, 
It refers to the study and practice of interpreting something. That something is typically ancient written texts. The interesting aspect of hermeneutics is that it, is used, it uses non-interpretive, non-verbal forms to lead interpreters to discover the meanings behind what seems to have been written. That sounds like a mystery to me. Therefore, it's good to understand and consider who wrote the text, to whom it was written, what was their culture like, were there, what were their habits, were the people being uh, written to in an agrarian society or did they gather in larger towns and cities? All of these things can help us to understand difficult passages in scripture and other written writings of antiquity. Little was known about the process of plant growth in Jesus' time, although I can imagine he knew since he created them. But the parable of being mis mysteries helped folks to appreciate their importance and the mysticism behind them. Jesus aptly described in the first part of this chapter what happens to seeds that fall on a variety of soil types and under, under differing situations. Today's parable should be familiar to all of us. The sower of seeds, we probably, all probably have heard this parable before. The seed is sown, which means that it was probably scattered about by hand. Other seeds uh, fall, uh, some seeds fall on rocky ground, other seeds on, in a thorny place, and some still land on fertile ground and packed soil. Each type of soil possesses obvious advantages and disadvantages to the growth and development of the seeds that land there. I believe each of us at some time or another has encountered these soil types in our hearts and in our lives. But somewhere along the way the seeds of God's word fell on some fertile, some fertile soil of our life and took root. The seed of God's word follows a mysterious path of growth and its mechanisms slowly, oops, and its mechanisms <clears throat> differ for each of us. The mechanisms of God take over. At his own speed, God quietly works around that seed of our lives. We don't know how God makes that seed of his word grow, but he does so without any help, I assure you. Only God knows when the harvest is ready. In Mark 4, verse 39, it says, but when the grain is ripe, at once he, that is the harvester, or God, goes in with a sickle because the harvest has come. So what shall we say? Who is important in our life as Christians? We all have roles to play that God may have assigned us. 1 Corinthians 3, 5 through 9 says, What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted the polis water, but God gave them growth. So neither one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the increase. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages accordingly for each labor. For we are God's servants working together. You are God's field, God's building, God's church. So it's like Thoreau said, if I do not believe that a plant will spring up where no seed has been, I have great faith in a seed. Convince me that you have a seed there, and I'm prepared to expect wonders. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.